What up, fellas? Sensei Tudum here with another Bitcoin video for you. So, as promised on Twitter, going to have a, do a little bit of a video update here. Not going to get super in-depth with the count, um, just because it, the video could go on for days, right? So, let's just have a talk. Let's just have a brief discussion of Bitcoin. And I want to avoid the nuance so that we can sort of focus on the forest, right? Um what do we have here? So this is the, you know, this is the count that I've been rolling with. And, you know, I'm not sure if you guys on Twitter have seen it or not. I think so. Members, you've definitely seen it a bunch. Um, been rolling with this the entire way. Uh, we got a beautiful sideways style of two here. We got a beautiful sharp um, four. Nice alternation. Um, let's see, weight relationship. Oh, no, I did post this on Twitter because some guy said that this was three wave. He said that wave one is three wave. I have a feeling he thought I placed the one here and just didn't look at the count that people do that. Um, anyway, excuse me. Let's see. All right. So nice, long, extended three wave. Um, same thing in the three that we saw there. You know, we see in every impulse. It's a nice little sideways style two here. And then one, two, three, four, five for the three. Sharp style two. Extended fifth. Fifth comes, fourth comes down and a sharp, as expected after an extended fifth, to the area of wave two of one lesser degree, which, you know, perfect. Perfect uh, attributes after an extended fit. Catches right here on this on this Vegas wave, four-hour Vegas wave, creates this trend line. So now we have this, this setup that shows us we have internal structure for this move. Then we come up into what is an extended fifth with a potentially extended one. Um, that's one option. There's other options, of course. There always is. But they you one, two, three, four, five. And then I posted this particular chart without the Elliott Wave count on it and mentioned some things for you guys to look at this structure of breaking to know when we get external. And why would I do that then? Well, we were coming up on this horizontal resistance. We were coming to the completion of potentially five clean waves, right? One, two, three, four, five with five clean waves in the fifth, right? We were showing divergences on multiple time frames on multiple degrees of trend. So, you know, was I telling you it was the top? No, but guess what? It's time to start thinking about what's going to happen when this retraces at that point, and that's why I made the video for you, um, or just the post for you. Um, what have we gotten since then? This move looks to be impulsive. I mean, it looks to be classically impulsive, everything about it. Um, and then we've had a move that looks like an impulse potentially playing out off that low, where we caught this structure, and, and reversed immediately with strength. Now, is this a short squeeze? Maybe, maybe, but we haven't gone external. So there's no, you know, the, of this whole move. So there's no guarantees, not that there's ever guarantees in trading, but there's not even a high degree of probability that we're correcting all of this move yet. So we have to consider options of why we may not be and why we may be correcting this entire move. So why we may not be, we already covered here, is that we've got, um, and this was just, I had shown somebody, I guess, that that was showing a hidden bullish divergence, and then boom, right off the structure. I mean, it was pretty, that was a pretty obvious play for a bounce. In any event, um, the uh, this move here being playing out like impulsive, you draw, draw your base trend channel as always, breaks out of it on the third of the third. Um, won't even look at the volume, but we know it spiked. And this potentially looks like a four-way playing out. So if we come up at five, we're going to be like 887, roughly, back to the median here of the uh, move that we're saying is a five-wave down to look for a three, right? Hmm. So even if we somehow get a three here and don't get external to that move, Where is that going to bring us? One to one. That doesn't even bring us to really break structure on a high probability. So we have to really consider the chances that we don't break structure. Um, we'll show this. So if you look at this guy, this little tiny pitchfork on the lower degree, we broke the trigger line, which is a short signal. And, you know, you could have potentially shorted into the support, which, you know, that's what I would have recommended if you're a scalper would have paid out for you um the question becomes is it going to lead to a break of this support this structure so far it has not and you know we got the bounce hard on it but we are now finding resistance on this trigger line um who's gonna win it's hard to say guys um i would say i just want to give you this potential possibility that, that if this is not the count 
what what could what are the options that you know assuming that this potentially is impulsive because it looks impulsive how could this be impulsive and we continue on well maybe things are much more bullish than what we're looking at and you know i'm not saying that this is my count i'm just letting you guys know to consider our possibilities so what if you had something like this right so not exactly what you're looking for it's so bullish this this count uh and it wouldn't be exactly what you're looking for in this um context as far as um it, it one two one two one two because you know one two one two generally you're going to see a lack of alternation which we just covered that you have alternation here um and then you know, if this is a corrective move, it's definitely a sharp style. Um, even no matter what, well, this could go sideways. It's going to be, this would actually most likely be sideways if it ends up being corrective. Thinking out loud here. But typically you would expect non-alternation, um, or at least those are things to look for, and overlapping of the, you know, the second two with the first one. Um, doesn't have to happen because, again, you know, what are the big traits of a of an extension progress? You know, similar size, non-overlapping waves, which we have here in these two. These are almost one to one. So this is would be your well, not almost one to one, just about to the tick one to one. How about that? So that's one option. Um, you could potentially go with. Let's see, one two maybe even you could do this and then maybe an extended fifth would come out of that to break all of this support um, again still looking for some sort of completion in this area this could very well be the case You would expect, the th obviously, the third of the third to extend, not the one in any case. Um, but that's another potential option is that we might get, you know, sideways up in here. So this goes up in five, down in three, up in five, creates a new price extreme, comes down again in five or something like that. And that would mean this is a three somehow. Um, so we get your nice sideways style four, which would give you the strength to boom, bust out through this, this resistance. Should this resistance break, right? it's going to have some pop to it, right? Because, you know, you're pushing really hard to get up through something and then it breaks away and then you just have all that momentum to carry you, carry you through. And it might be a straight dilly knowing Bitcoin. Who knows? Just potential option. Um, but, you know, that's basically, you know, figure out your counts within here. This is one that I actually don't mind. And let me just show you what I was talking about if we were to do something like this. Keep, keep structure. Oops. Keep structure. However, it does that. And then... You know, once it breaks through, you know, go hard. Um, and then, so if that were to be an extension after these two waves, you'd be looking for a one-to-one -one of, hey. Something like that. Put a one-to-one -one on it. Yeah, something like I just drew it there. Um, and that could potentially take you back up to that 13K range, which would be double top-ish. People would be freaking out as they tend to do. But remember, these pivots are resistance. That's just how that works, right? And if you go over here, you're going to see that these pivots have, you know, neighboring pivots. So these are these are significant areas. Um, just because we turn around there doesn't mean that it's, it's the worst, right? Um, so this is one potential option. But basically... My point is, until we get external, you have to consider the fact that we might not be getting there. So consider other options of what could happen. If you see something like this playing out, doesn't this might be something that you're interested in, right? If something like this is playing out. So just keep your options available. I'm not telling you that that's the count. I'm telling you that's what I'm watching. There's never a certainty of outcome, right? So we're just playing probabilities, and these are the probabilities we're looking for. We're looking for the structure to break here with the potential of a completed five waves, or we're looking for uh, to remain internal and fucking go ham on this fifth wave.
potential fifth wave, which would be fifth of third. Come down, test support here for fourth, up again for fifth, and then come back down once again. That would create um, a high relative to this. And then you come down for another big two, probably down into this area again, you know, three, four, let's see, four, you know, whatever, four, five, and then something like that. And then after that, you're off to all-time highs, you know, once all that plays out. But shit, guys, this could, this could take most of the year. Who knows? But just a, just a little bit of a – just a discussion. No, no, uh, no calls here. Not that I ever make calls. I know some of you guys think I do that. Um, just telling you guys what to look out for from an Elliott Wave perspective. All right, boys. That's enough. Toot out.